Greetings and God bless. This is David Graves, pastor of Livingstone Orthodox Presbyterian Church in Wichita Falls, Texas. We meet at 3115 Buchanan Street. Uh, it's called The Ark, which is where we're renting currently. We meet there on Sundays at 1045 for morning worship. And beginning September 8th, we'll begin at 6 p.m. And so in the morning, we're working through the book of Acts, and we'll begin working through the book of Judges on Sunday evenings. Now, as we start this journey through the book of Leviticus, there's a few questions people ask. How is it and why is it that somebody would become interested in the book of Leviticus? If you look at the book on my right shoulder, you'll see Alfred Edersheim's the temple, its ministry and service. I, I read this book 30 years ago, and one of Edersheim's contentions is that if you wish to understand the book of Revelation, you first have to understand the book of Leviticus. So that was one of the first things in, that began my interest in this book. And there are many other things, and we'll have to look at many of these throughout our journey. But this morning, I want to take away and understand what are some of the obstacles? Why do some people not enjoy, or why do they turn away from the book of Leviticus? Uh, the church father Origen puts it like this. If you read people passages from the divine books that are good and clear, they will hear them with great joy, but provide them a reading from Leviticus, and at once the listener will gag and push it away as if it were some bizarre food. He came, after all, to learn how to honor God, take in the teachings that concern justice and piety, but instead he is now hearing about the ritual of burnt sacrifices. He goes on to say, It's the Jews' business. Let them deal with it, people will say in disgust. But begin from the principle that the law is spiritual. If we are to understand and explain all the lessons that are read, it is the church's responsibility to show the people that the dull details are filled with promise. For my part, and because I believe what my Lord Jesus Christ has said, I think that there is not a jot or tittle in the law and the prophets that does not contain a mystery. So he also begins to explain why. I can also go to what one of my uh, theology professors said in seminary. If there's ever a part of scripture that you don't like, the only response is to repent, for God has spoken. And all scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for various things. And so we must read it in its rightful context. Now, it's not just the church fathers that recognize this. We can see it in pop culture. Um, there was a series of books set in um, the British Navy of the early 1800s. And... In one scene in the first book, this, these lines are put. Um, well, let me see, where is it? Sorry, give me a second. If any person in the fleet shall treacherously or cowardly or cry for quarter, he shall suffer death. If any person in the fleet shall commit the unnatural and detestable sin of buggery or sodomy with the man or beast, he shall be punished with death. Death rang through and through the articles. And even when the words are, were utterly incomprehensible, the death had a fine Leviticus ring, and the crew took grave pleasure in it. Death rang through and through the articles of war, had a fine Leviticus ring. And we think of Leviticus, we think of death. We can think of the death of Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, when they took their own incense, their own incense censers, their own fire, and plunged into the Holy of Holies, when God had given them censers, had given them incense, had given them fire from heaven in just the verse before. And yet, they decided to worship God according to their own appointment. And thus, they were brought to a fiery end. We can think of the case of the man of blasphemy. Those are the only two narratives we have in the book of Leviticus, and they both have death in them. Death rings through and through. But is it death or is it life? One commentator, Nobuyoshi Kuyuchi, writes, 
that death in the book of Leviticus is considered unnatural. It's always the wages of sin. And so whether it's the death of the sacrificial animal in place of the one who has sinned, or it's the death or excommunication of the one who has sinned, death is the consequence of sin. And so the purpose of Leviticus is not death, it's life in the presence of God. We, we can see this throughout. We can see, as Paul writes, Now, if the ministry of death carved in letters on stone came with such glory that Israelites could not gaze on Moses' face because of its glory, which was being brought to an end, will not the ministry of the Spirit have even more glory? For if there was glory in the ministry of condemnation, the ministry of righteousness must far exceed it in glory. Indeed, in this case, what once had glory has come to have no glory at all because of the glory that surpasses it. For what was being brought to an end came with glory, much more will it bring, will it uh, have permanent glory. And so we see that, yes, this temporary ministration of death, as people think of it, when it's truly life, had an outer glory, had a glory to it, but now we have something much greater because the death of Jesus Christ has brought it to an end. The blood of bulls and goats could not cleanse the conscience, just the outward body. And yet Christ has come and he has brought an end, not because it was wrong, but because it was provisional. And now the true, the permanent has come. And so Christ sat down having given the once for all sacrifice. Even the pagan lawgiver on this matter of death being the wages of sin, Draco, from where we get the idea of draconian laws, when asked why is it that all of his penalties were death, it is said that Draco himself, when asked why he had fixed the punishment of death for most offenses, answers that he considered these lesser crimes to deserve it, and he had no greater punishment for more important ones. Thus, this man, whose laws have become a byword, of harsh and repressive regimes understood rightly, and these lesser crimes or sins deserve death. And since there is no greater punishment in this life, one is robbed of life because of one's sins eventually. And so we see that, yes, we have these sacrifices. Yes, we have death for sin. But we also have something in the Leviticus that you don't find without Leviticus, which is this promise, this promise that Christ fulfills of God will walk in our midst, that God will dwell with us, and that God will cause us to walk erect, or more properly, to break the bars of our yoke so that we can have that true confidence, that true access of li liberty of access under the throne of Christ. And so as we begin this study, we're going to be looking throughout at seeing how this book fits not just into um, the Pentateuch, the but also into the larger Bible, we'll need to start next time in the book of Genesis looking at how sin brought an end to this fellowship between God and man and how we have a provisional restoration in Leviticus before we see the full consummation when man shall dwell with God and God with man in the new heavens and the new earth. Thank you. God bless. Join us next time.